Do do do. Hello. Um, been a while since I posted something on the internet, but this is a relatively momentous time in history in a, a variety of ways. And one of those ways is um, Rainbow. So, or Rainbow from Cycling74. So Rainbow was a surprise to me. <laughs> I, yeah, it was a surprise. I had been pottering away in a little sort of uh, niche academic field of dynamic music. Um, including looking at some of um, Tracy Redhead's work, sort of defining or pointing to this thing called dynamic music, which seems to be happening uh, more and more. And um, when I think of dynamic music, I think back to like uh, RJ DJ on, um, on Androids or iOS devices. Um, which was uh, a method of embedding pure data sketches onto a mobile phone. And this seemed to have a lot of promise for creating sort of interactive music kind of on maybe not a mass scale, but, you know, on some sort of scale. Um, like shareable thing where dynamic music could sort of become a genre that people could um, could listen to and enjoy when they're like walking around, maybe the music's changing to their footsteps or their heart rate or the direction, you know, so the music's sort of alive. And that's quite an interesting um, area to compose in for a composer because it has so many challenges that pop up. The compositions are so diverse because they have to be bespoke to the particular situation that you're working in. Um, so RJDJ didn't really catch on. I'm sure people, or maybe it had like a really good sort of moment, but maybe it was a little bit early. Um, and I feel like Rainbow may have, um, stepped up to fill this gap quite unexpectedly, um, of what RJDJ was sort of trying, that sort of field of... Um, popular dynamic music, I think Rainbow has a really good chance of actually being one of the first things that is like a programming language or, or, or a musical environment in which you can program portable dynamic music. And that's that, that was something that I thought was uh, possibly impossible. Um, like, it seemed like such a hard problem because... Um, because the compositions need to be bespoke. And there still are some challenges. Um, even though Rainbow it seems like this is a, this is a pretty, great, um, gr pretty great tool to have a crack at a dynamic music standard like this, um, uh, there's still challenges of technical expertise, right? So my thinking... So any, anyway, so yeah, it's still... you still got to patch things together, but... Um, but that's that, that. There is another side to Rainbow, which sort of eases that technical hurdle a little bit. In that Rainbow is much simpler than Max. Rainbow is is a little bit like Gen in that it's a constrained sort of subset of objects, um, and because there's fewer objects than there are in um, the fully blown Max it's easier to learn and easier to get good at. Um, so in that way, it's a little bit like pure data. One of the things I really like about pure data is it is it's small. The language is small. So as if you're working on a pure data patch, you can get in a really good flow because you know all of the objects because there aren't that many objects. Um, whereas programming in Max, it's a much bigger environment. And so often you are... Um, like searching through the documentation to look for an object or copying help patches and things like this because you can't possibly know the whole thing. You can probably know the whole rainbow um, and you can know all of the objects and you're working with signals, which is this sort of quirky way, um, but also sort of limited in a way that offers lots of creative um, scope. So that is, that's sort of ideal having having um, a type like that, that is, that is so um, creatively flexible. 
So, um, I suppose this is, this is, these are my thoughts about Rainbow at the moment. Um, I plan to, um, put out a little tutorial for people getting started with Rainbow, especially anyone looking to work with a, on a Raspberry Pi, because that is, um, certainly one of the more exciting, um, platforms for Rainbow with the, op with the possibilities for hardware. That's quite exciting on top of, you know, on top of, um, the, the portable format side of things. Um, so anyway, I plan to put, put together something for people interested in um, Raspberry Pi and maybe people who are just getting started with Rainbow rather than sort of max patches more broadly. Um, yeah, that's my thoughts as of the 19th of November. I hope everyone is off to a good start of their end of 2023. Goodbye.